So we are here, folks. Sherman Knight, and I'm going to turn that down a little bit. Because if I don't, I will probably be able to hear myself the whole time. Um, this is actually my first time actually doing a... Um, there we go. Uh, this will be my first time actually doing a Zoom type call on um, on YouTube. So um, it's kind of a weird sensation. And um, so today we were normally going to have um, our guest on today. And that was um, uh, Marcus Johnson. We're going to actually have to reschedule Marcus for another date because um, just kind of some technical difficulties that we're really kind of running up against. So we'll have to do that, um, which means... I'm totally ill prepared for for this show today, which is kind of very frustrating. But that's all right. You know, we'll uh, if uh, if Marcus shows up at some point during the show, uh, we'll you know we'll bring him in. But uh, at this point right now, we're probably not going to bring him in unless something major happens here. Um, won't bring him in on the show, which is fine. Oh, there he is. Okay, and um, so um, I want to do this here. Eight, and I think we have Marcus on the line here. I'm gonna. Mar Hello, Marcus. How you doing? I'm doing well, Sherman. How about yourself? I am doing well. Thank. Good to see you. Uh, awesome. Good to see you as well. Looks like you're driving from here to there, huh? Yeah, man. I just picked up my buddy uh, and uh, saxophone superstar Elon Troutman. We're about to go play some golf. What? You're gonna go play yes, golf sir. with with yes, with Troutman? Yeah. Nice. Very nice yes, morning. Well, hey, you got absolutely. yeah. So you got a couple of minutes. We want to talk a little bit on the show about what you're doing, and uh, looking really forward to kind of just uh, spend a little time with you. Oops. Hey, my pleasure. Fantastic. So, folks, this is uh, Marcus Johnson, and Marcus is among other other things. He's an author. He's a musician. He's an attorney. Now, are you a judge? Or are you a Magistrate, you know. No, 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 no. Just an entrepreneur. <laughs> entrepreneur. You're a dad, um, and uh, and I've been reading your book, okay. uh, Flow. Uh, this has been a really good book. Now, when did you start this book? Um, uh, right before my father passed in 2015. Okay. And uh, yep. and so and so, what was uh, I mean? What was the inspiration behind uh, writing the book? Well, number one, my daughter, um, you know, we travel on planes, trains, and automobiles all the time for our life. We're in front of people where we don't know them. Um, you don't know who may have the best intention or not. Mm -hmm. um, and as such, you know, anything could happen at any time. So for me, and then in the midst of also my father, you know, getting ready, basically he had a condition called NPH, normal pressure hydrocephalus, where there's a buildup of spinal fluid on the brain mm -hmm. um, where I was watching my father deteriorate. And so as he was, you know, heading down, I was like, oh, my God, he never did his book. I thought we had 20 years to get his thoughts down. So let me not make the same mistake and let me do something for Chase um, mm -hmm. now and let me give her a guide to her life. But mm -hmm. also um, I had done my first TED Talk. And I was um, doing a lot of speaking and, mm -hmm. you know, speaking to law firms and businesses and government agencies and everybody was like, so I just made the decision to go you know, five hours back to the country uh, to get a chapter done, you know, one chapter <laughs> there, one chapter back. Yes. And over, you know, uh, over that year, you know, got the, uh, got the book finished. Well, that's awesome. You know, I'm writing a book right now myself, uh, and it's called How to Live a Remarkable Life, a Truly Remarkable Life. And so I understand the, you know, the ups and downs of writing a book where you just try to get in as much information as you possibly can. Uh, folks, we've got Marcus Johnson here on uh, Black Success Magazine, the podcast, and we're talking about his book called Flow for the Love of. And, um, and Marcus, I'm just going to talk to you uh, just a couple of chapters in the book, because I thought that uh, and I did actually almost get to all the way through the book, which is great. So uh, I want to thank your uh, your folks for sending it over to me. Uh, you've got a chapter in your book and you talk about uh, building, uh, pursuing excellence in life and how important it is. I'm going to read you just a little bit of something that I that I thought was um, uh, I thought was pretty remarkable. And you said so much of life 
of living a life of excellence is making sure that you overcome the daily obstacles that life puts in your path. People can get stuck in hell when they don't achieve their expectations, goals, and objectives. And instead of going through the process of reevaluation, setting new goals and moving forward on, uh, moving forward, uh, moving on, they take things uh, personally and make a choice to stay in hell and subject themselves to punishment. Very interesting. But you, but the, the whole gist of the chapter is really about living at excellence. So, you know, what was your thinking behind that chapter about writing about excellence in life? Uh oh, I think you, I think you muted yourself there a little bit too. Uh, sorry, you there? there you go. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, sorry about that. You know, I, 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 I think a lot of people um, live a life in an idea that you can have a level of perfection. Mm -hmm. And the one thing, and I think that also the standard by which we're judged is perfection. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is the fact that we are judged uh, from the time that we enter preschool and we're taught to judge ourselves amongst other people and not in our own in terms of who we are mm -hmm. uh, from the time we enter preschool. Um, and primary education does a great job of limiting your ability to think um, limitlessly about yourself. And mm -hmm. so excellence to me is a is is kind of like an infinity standard where it doesn't you can always be better. I think the, the brilliance in even studying, you know, in law and studying the Constitution is, you know, we the people in order to make a more perfect union. Mm -hmm. What they're saying is it's not a perfect union yeah. and it will never be a perfect union. And so what then is the next standard by which we can live? And that is excellence. And how do you live excellence every day? You every know, day. You, sure. yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome too. You know, um, so folks, this Black Success Magazine, uh, the podcast, I'm your host, Sherman Ray, and we are speaking to Marcus Johnson. Marcus Johnson is the author of this great book. If you haven't gotten it yet, it's called Flow for the Love of. And um, just talk with him a little bit about himself and, you know, kind of the adventures. Now you are a true Renaissance man. Uh, you know, you've done it all. Uh, and when I was reading your story, I was saying to myself, I've done the same thing, you know, where you do five, six things and you, you know, you probably should focus on the one, but you got so much going on, got so much going on in your mind that you're already on the next thing as, uh, as you're, as you're starting on something else. One of the most important things I think was flow wines though. Um, yeah. and uh, flow wines is a uh, now I uh, from what I'm reading it's you've got it marketed all over the place but it, I'm more interested in the start of it tell you the truth and how you actually got started in this because it, and it's funny that that should have been like the first chapter to me because I'm thinking uh -huh. myself how did this guy get this this wine company started give us a little out give us a little outline how did this actually get started well you know it, it really came out of the mid beginning of the, the first decade in 2000, where everything went through disruption. Mm -hmm. And I had a record label with uh, the founder of BET, where I launched, you know, a bunch of different kind of careers. I, I put out Nick Colleone's first CD. Um, I put out uh, two CDs on Bobby Lyle, Phil Martin, did stuff with Joey Somerville. And, you know, we, we had some, some huge success. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, the peer-to-peer -peer services popped up and started taking all of the money out of the business, digital yeah. sharing, um, mp3.com. And so you saw checks that were, you know, at a point, you know, at six figures a month coming in, mm -hmm. immediately dropped to five figures a month coming in and headed towards four figures a month coming in. Big now, difference. that's yeah. in a six-month, six to eight-month period of time. Wow. And so you're saying to yourself, like, oh, boy, and I have a staff, I have a studio, I'm doing all this stuff. So I had to have a come to come to Marcus and Jesus moment where yes. it's like, OK, <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah. And um, the, the one thing I knew is that the traditional record industry would never be the same. Mm -hmm. um, the, the next thing I, I was reading, I think the name of the book is Uncommon Ground for uh, – Oh my God, uh, founder of, uh, and I'm tripping on his name right now, Starbucks, Howard Schultz. Howard Schultz. And, mm -hmm. and he was talking about, they were going through the same thing where, you know, you used to go to Manhattan and on every corner there was a Starbucks. Yes. So, of course, they're going to cannibalize each other's sales. Mm -hmm. So, you can't do that. 
And, you know, he was like, well, what business are we really in? And that's when Starbucks really started formulating the idea of we're the third place business, meaning your house is number one, mm -hmm. your office is number two, and we want Starbucks to be your number three. Yes. And that was where they started changing the interior design. Um, it was more welcoming. You could relax, et cetera, et cetera. So I was sitting in my studio one night and I just had to sit back with my lights off and looking out over the city. Um uh, you know, and, and, and looking over the city and asking myself, well, what business am I really in? And I came to the understanding that I'm not really in the music business. Hmm. We're not in the music business. We, if you think about it, we're not even in the entertainment business. Huh. COVID has shown us that we are really in the business of therapy. People use our products to feel better, to enhance sure. their life. Yeah, that's what you that's, you know, basically when you insert that kind of pill and it's from your psychiatrist, you know what I mean? That is that is mental health, you know, maintenance, right? Yes. So, and I, when I when I understood that, that changed the scope through which or the lens through which I could see the business and the flow business. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, out of that, that thought session came flow for the love of. Um, immediately went to get that trademark, um, you know, and then put out a series of records, lifestyle records, flow, mm -hmm. um, did very well. And then the wine was just like, okay, even with the success of the, of the series, we're not making the money we need to. Yeah. What else do we have and who are we targeting? Well, every time I go out, I see the women and the women are drinking what? Wine. Wine. Yeah, sure. So if I'm in the therapy business targeting women, and want them to engage with what we're doing there's no better mixture than some marcus johnson music yeah and a bottle or a glass of low wine and Put a that bottle together or gla i know that is brilliant and I, you know it's funny a lot of business owners are going to watch this video that we're we're doing right now um especially uh, uh the business owners that, are, that i'm a part of with the black business chamber of commerce in las vegas and i don't think a lot of them really can look at their business and go, oh my gosh, it's actually not just this, but it's got a lot of facets to it. And you were looking at what you were doing and saying to, to yourself, wait a minute, I'm not in the music business. What is the music business? It's really therapy. And I think that really kind of, I, I, you probably, the light went off in a lot of people's heads just now. They're going, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't ever thought about that. Yeah, that's brilliant. And, and so it's always really thinking deeper. Yeah. Um, and if you can get to that next level under the facade of what you're doing, mm -hmm. man, there's so much you can do. I mean, I think, you know, even now with artists, I think that we're master marketers, yes. but we've never been taught marketing because all of the people who taught us in school are basically incompetent and decidedly incompetent. I don't need to learn about business. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be a musician. I don't need to learn about, you know, marketing because i'm going to be a superstar i'm going to learn how to play a change and play better than so and so yes. and sing so better than so and so and then they get upset when they're like well they don't have any talent why are they successful why because they, successful? they went to the marketing class while yes. you were worried about playing changes I'll if tell it you. was about how if it was about how good you were yeah the music scene would look a lot different than it does well, right now it, it would definitely but look it, a lot different <laughs> yeah yeah it has nothing very little to do with that. Yeah. And it's funny because now the best marketers are out there right now. Snoop Dogg is probably one of the best marketers right now because he is out. He is everywhere now. I mean, he has gone I'm from not... being he's gone from hip hop and had one persona to now he is almost he is as mainstream as you're going to get with an edge. And he's changed the culture with what he's done. I, 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 I and I'm not a big hip hop guy. You, I'm a jazz guy. So I, I love your stuff. But I really appreciate Snoop because of what he has been able to do with his brand and how he has, he's just spread it out all over the place. And he's relatable, man. I mean, from the days of smoking weed and <laughs> being real with it, like Snoop was always the one that, you know, that, that Dre would go to and he'd be like, yo dog, you know, chill, you know, yeah. he's just like, he, he's like the most interesting man on Dos Equis, right? He, yes, he is the equivalent of the African American hip hop, Dos Equis guy, yes, you know, stay it. thirsty, my friend. Yeah, I know, <laughs> stay, that's thirsty. Thirsty. stay thirsty, he is the Dos Equis man. <laughs> As he takes a puff, you know what I mean? And everybody's like, I want to be like him, yes. can I be like him? And look, he's 55, 
you know what I mean? And still hanging out with, you know, pe- getting respect from people who are 15 and up. Yes, yes. Rela- being relatable. Being and relatable. caring that you're relatable and letting people know that you're relatable. Yes. If you can get, if you can get Martha Stewart to, to sit down and everybody goes, well, him and Martha Stewart, they're like this. You go, wait a minute, this guy has crossed boundaries. He's crossed, you know, it's just an amazing thing. Hey, I want to, uh, folks, if you're just watching us right now, um, I'm on the line right now with Marcus Johnson. He's been very gracious with us um, to uh, be a part of the show, Down Black Success Magazine, the podcast. Um, his book, we're talking about his book called Flow for the Love of and uh, Marcus, one more question, because I know you're driving. I don't want to hold you up all day long. But you had a really interesting story about your mom. And your mom uh, was played a pivotal part. I know you knew I was going there, huh? <laughs> your mom either played they, such- Either they are crying. Well, either, either or crying. Those, either. Well, because yeah. you're... Cause you're uh, there is uh, the crying thing uh, to me was... Uh, uh, I, I was a counselor, so I have a degree in counseling. So when I see people cry, I go, stop, don't, don't stop them crying. They're it's working. They're working through this stuff. And, and, but, but unless you're actually a counselor, it, you don't really value that, but your mom. So, so that's one thing and we won't go there, but your mom though, had such a pivotal part in your life. And she taught you so much um, about perseverance and about and pushing through what kind of impact did your mom have on you? As far, and do you attribute where you're at now to what where uh, because of what you watched her go through? So number one, I had equally as much influence from my dad and as I did my mom, if not a little bit more. So I, I want to make that point okay. very clear. I had an African American dad that was present and that was there for me when I needed him, mm-hmm. and was a sage as it relates to like mm-hmm. you know just wisdom and ended up being my best friend. And when my father passed, I lost my best friend. Um, Now, that said, that said, it was brilliant. My dad is brilliant. PhD at the time at 26, came Mm -hmm. from East St. Louis, Illinois. And then he met this woman at Southern Illinois University when he was a Kappa and she was the freshman um, Uh from St. Louis, the good girl, you know what I mean? (laughs) And he met my mom. And, you know, my mom, stunningly beautiful, but was... Uh-oh. She was that. She was that. Uh oh, are you there? Yeah, I'm still there. Yeah, we Uh-oh. missed that. Just so your mom said, stunningly That's beautiful. Stunningly beautiful. Had it been a touch on the, um, let's say, engaged hood side, right? So she she was not going to let you get away with anything. Okay. She was going to call you on it, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah. my mom is five foot one. I swear there were a couple times that she grew to be seven feet tall. Oh, of right? always. And, yes, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but my mom had a stroke when I was 17 and in high school. Mm-hmm. And through that experience, I have witnessed somebody at the top of her game almost lose it all in a day. I've seen her fall upstairs, downstairs, through walls, mm. in the bathtub, bang her head, break her face break her behind, um, have lumps on her lungs, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, mm-hmm. get, get it, go through, you know, biopsies, um, and you lose an eye, you know, use of an eye. And the one thing that my mom still does is she still has the ability to giggle at herself hmm. and to smile at herself. Yeah, yeah. And going back to your theory and you know, you asked me about my theory of excellence and not perfection. Yeah. There's something that is wrong in humanity right now mm-hmm. because we're not being, there's a reason we're called human beings. Mm-hmm. We are human searchers. We are human. You know, I want to be perfect, you know, uh, the perfect human, but we're not being, we're not making the choice to be like, you know what, let me try this, man. If it works, man, you know, we're going to play golf today. You know, I, I don't know which Marcus is going to show up. And there's going to be points where I'm going to take my club and want to throw it, you know, one way or the other. Right, Eli? That's true. That's true. Right? That's true. Right? It, 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 right? So, and then they're going to – but at the end of the day, I'm going to put my ball back down on the next tee 
and I'm going to hit a, a, another shot. And if I mess up all day, I have enough balls, thank God for that, where I can do what I need to do. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I do my best when I make those shots. And instead of getting upset, I say, okay, that's what, that's what I have. That's the yeah. lie I have. That's the life I have. Mm -hmm. Let's go up here and strategize about how to get out of the rough, back into the fairway, so I yeah. can hit it. And these are things I learned from my mom. Like, mm -hmm. son, don't take yourself so seriously. You have to yeah. learn to laugh at yourself, man. Sure, sure. You know, and there's so many other people, you know, who do what they, you know, they, they have a whole different perspective. So, you know, it, it is, it is, it, it is maintaining, she, she always had us maintaining a focus on our North Star. Mm -hmm. And, you know, hey, son, make sure that you, you know, you, you are, are working towards your dreams and not chasing them. Yeah, it's, it's very, very important. Yeah, oh, that's good stuff. Good stuff. Well, folks, once again, on the line, we have Marcus Johnson here today on Black Success Magazine the podcast. I'm um, talking about his book uh, for the love of uh, uh, flow for the love of Marcus Johnson. You uh, once again, uh, if you've gotten a few folks who are watching the show, you get a chance. Go out and get this book. This is really good stuff. Good reading. Um, real easy reading, but you're not going to want to put it down. So if you can see, my book is like pretty marked up because there's a lot of stuff in here and you're going to want to read it a couple of times. Marcus, where can they get your book at? Well, you can get it at Amazon and you yeah. can also get the audio book at Audible. Oh. Um, and you just put, put both in with Marcus Johnson and mm -hmm. it'll come up. I've been doing the audio book thing lately because it's real simple. We've been in on the road a lot. So, you know, yeah, yeah man. Sure. Well, good stuff. And, well, I was say, get... go ahead. So the other thing is for any other thing that's related to what I do, like the music stuff as well. If mm -hmm. you just go to Mark Johnson 360, um, it has information on how to contact me. I'm doing a lot of speaking now. Yeah. Um, a lot of Zoom speaking. I just spoke at Harvard last week uh, or two weeks ago. Last week I spoke at Howard. And um, that is something I have a passion for, really kind of spreading the word about what I call my deeper motto, which is mm -hmm. dream, um, dream, engage, environment, plan, execute, reflect, and going yeah. deeper all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been, it's been having an impact. So MarcusJohnson360.com. Sure. You know, we need that. You know, the world needs more deep thinking brothers like you. Re I call you a Renaissance man. Cause that's really what you are. You've done so much in life. I'm uh, really impressed with you. Thank you so much for being a part of the show today. Marcus, John Marcus, once again, do you have an email address that people can get a hold of yet? Yeah, Marcus at MarcusJohnson360.com. Marcus at MarcusJohnson360.com. Folks, once again, thank you so much, Marcus, for being on the show today. Have a good time on the links, okay? All right, thank you much. All I right, appreciate brother. you. All, All right, right, brother. Peace. All right, bye-bye. And... So all right. And that was Marcus Johnson, folks. Thank you so much for being a part of the show today. Um, and I mean, this is a really good book. I, I've, I've read this book, as you can see, cover to cover on this book uh, for Marcus. And um, it's just been, a, I mean, it's, I think it's been a, it's been a really good read. Great um, portions of it that, um, but one of the uh, portions, and I'm going to just share this with you just really quickly before we end today. Um is he talks about rest and that's something really we don't get a lot of in this day and age where we just, you know, just kick back and relax a little bit. Um, but he talks about taking time out of your day and really one hour a day, uh, one day per week, one, um, one week per quarter, one quarter per couple of years and one year per seven. And if you can do it, um, there is a, I guess there's a, a study that was put out that said that if you can take this time out, if you can just take out, you know, a couple of minutes every, you know, a minute every hour, you know, if you can just take a minute out every hour to just feed you and just to sit back and relax a little bit, how much your life will change and how more productive you will be. Um, and, and I know that that is meant for me because I'm just on the go all the time. I mean, there's <laughs> all the time. And, uh, it's so, you know, you want to be able to do that in your own life. And, uh, and so thank you so much for that, Marcus. It's been a good book really has anyways, 
we'll be back again tomorrow, um, which will be Friday. Today, I've actually got um, got a lot of stuff I'm doing today. We're opening up a new office. So looking forward to that. So we're going to, we're talking about the new office that we're working on and all the things we're, we're doing with the Black Business Chamber. Um, and then tomorrow, I'm actually going to be speaking in front of a diversity group. And I was actually going to start the show today uh, on talking about diversity, but uh, the uh, we there's a company, a construction company here in town that is doing a diversity training, and I get to do the diversity training for them. So which will be good because I'll be able to bring my 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 spin on it. Uh, we might even talk about you know what would football American football be like without diversity, or what would American baseball or basketball be without diversity uh, what would the i mean what you know what would ice cream be without diversity so we're going to talk a little bit about that anyway so we will see you again tomorrow 8 30 it's about nine o'clock or so uh this has been sherman ray black success magazine the podcast thank you for being a part of the show and once again um you know if you uh, want to get a hold of marcus uh johnson it's at marcus at marcus johnson 360.com Okay, so we'll see you again tomorrow. Peace out.